Hi guys, my name is Kaylee and I'm going to be sharing my testimony on how I became a Christian from being in the new age. Well, it really started around when I was six years old. Um, my family, even though they um, consider themselves Christian, um, dabble into the new age quite a bit. Um, I would like to talk about this sometime, an important topic, which is um, infiltration of the New Age in the church, um, especially the American church. I don't know much about the European church in this regard, but um, anyways, around when I was six years old, um, my family taught me about astrology. Now, I do want to say I have some family members who are um, very good Christians in the regard that they are against the occult. They are against astrology and they used to be into it and palm reading and they left that and when they became a Christian but some of my other family they're like oh yeah I check my horoscope it's no big deal um you know I'm I'm a Libra or I'm this and uh, you know I just check my horoscope I'm just curious um and they don't really like think about the implications in that regard they think it's harmless and that's um, how I was really taught. It was um, naive, like I would go on this website and it was for kids and it was about astrology and um, like, oh, I'm a Leo. So this is, this has to be my personality. I have to be creative. I have to be bold, like no other um, like personality or no other um, like someone born a different time of the year can't have that kind of personality. Um, I've just seen these like memes that say, oh, I'm such a Pisces. I do not like when people disrespect me. Like, are you kidding me? Um, yeah, so I was really, I was raised a Christian, but like mixed with new age. Um, like I had, half of my family's pretty much Pentecostal. Um, and most of them are against the horoscopes and astrology, um, and they're really into the gifts of the spirit, praying in tongues, um, laying on hands, healing, um, stuff like that. And so I, um, I, I was raised by pretty much like my grandparents and my parents. And so my grandparents are um, Pentecostal and then my parents are like Baptist, uh, Southern Baptist, non-denominational. Um, so one part of my family really um, taught me a lot about God in the regard that he does miracles, he works today, and um, would tell me um, a lot of Bible stories, um, would talk a lot about their spiritual experiences, such as with the demonic, um, angelic, um, spiritual manifestations um, with God. Um, and that was really good to hear about. And that set up my foundation for um, knowing and belief in the supernatural. There was never really a time in my life where I didn't believe in the supernatural, except around 12. I was pretty like, militant atheist really rebellious like just hated anything that had to do um with church god um so i didn't really think about the supernatural at that time um and then i was like agnostic but anyways i'll go into that um later um and then i have another part of my family that really didn't teach me about the word of god uh at home they would bring me to church and it was stuff I didn't grasp because I wasn't taught at home. Um, we didn't read the Bible together. We didn't really talk about Christian things, mostly talk about like politics, pop culture, um, trivial things, uh, not really spiritual. There was like a kind of anti-spiritual element there where um, all prayer um, has to be private, kind of like taking that um, quote that Jesus said about uh, pray in your room out of context like he didn't mean to only pray in your room but that's like how they take it so um, 
it was very like lukewarm and unspiritual there. Um, and um, with some of my family who was really into the spiritual, they wouldn't talk about like sound doctrine, theology. Um, so yeah, uh, that's why I'm not um, Pentecostal. Um, I'd consider myself fairly charismatic. I'm not into like that extreme stuff like where people are like having seizures falling over. Uh, I've been to those meetings where um, people fall over and in my experience, it is fake. Um, some people, they may claim they have had a real experience. I can't say for sure um, if that was God or not, or if that was demonic. Um, a lot of those um, people falling out in the spirit, maybe it's true, I don't know, but the the having a seizure, barking like a go uh, like a dog, um, you know, falling over, that's um, in the Bible. The only time that happens is demonic um, possession. So I'm, I would say, uh, yeah, that kind of like group people who do that. I don't really um, do church like that. So. Um, especially because I was in the New Age and I see that people seek to have, um, ecstatic experiences, um, like the Kundalini spirit. That was something that I was into. Um, I didn't quite get into having the, those bodily contortions. Um, so, uh, basically, uh, in my Christian or in my upbringing, I had a foundation already for a mixture of Christianity and New Age. Um, so yeah, I um, basically became, um, like I said, militant atheist around the time I was 12. That was the first time I really w didn't consider myself a Christian. I, um, I got uh, taken advantage of, um, pretty much molested by the neighborhood boys. And then I remember telling a friend the next day and um, at school and then she told her friend on the bus and then everyone in the school knew because um, a lot of people knew me there. Um, I was pretty um, popular at the time. And then I transferred schools and everyone suddenly knew about that there. And um, I, I remember going to church on like their youth group night and I um, was depressed. Um, I felt so ashamed and so kind of sat in the corner by myself and no one said anything to me. Um, there, yeah, there, uh, there was like group things and just no one wanted to talk to me. Um, so I felt like a black sheep and I just really started hating the church after that. Um, I felt they were like judgmental, self-righteous, um, and then I would have a lot of arguments with my father, or more like debates about um, the existence of God. And he convinced me that a God exists, a creator exists, um, namely on the argument of, um, well, on Eastern Island, Easter Island, do you, they say that those um, statues were created just uh, they don't know. Um, they some say it was just created out of like by themselves, or they they don't know the mystery. But there had to have been a creator. And I'm like, well, that really resonates with me. So I um, believed in a creator. I was agnostic, and um, I I was really living a party life um, at that point. I was just. Um, living in a life of shame and um, I was sleeping around a lot. I was really um, like addicted to drugs and sex and alcohol and um, attention. I was um, really living a sinful lifestyle um, and I was blaspheming God. I would make fun of God. I would post a lot of satanic imagery. Um, really dark stuff. Um, I was just always watching horror movies. Um, I was really in a dark place. And then, um, uh, oh yeah, I was also really into the paranormal. I've always really been interested in that. Um, but I never had any experience until I became a Christian with the 
supernatural. I'd like to make another video on that sometime. But yeah, before I became a Christian, I had no spiritual experiences whatsoever. But then when I became a Christian, it's like, whoa, like constant spiritual warfare, like interacting with um, like demons, not interacting, but they would come attack me. I would see them. I'd speak the name of Jesus. They'd instantly flee. Um, yeah. So um, around when I was 17, I like, I, I kind of became a Christian because I was involved in some really heavy drugs and um, was just like getting so taken advantage, advantage of by really bad people just over and over again. And one day it was just like my breaking point. I was on lots of drugs, lots of alcohol, got taken advantage of. Um, and uh, yeah, I got, I got molested by um, someone, someone very bad. And um, I, it, I called out to Jesus. I, I said, Lord, um, I, I, I said, thank you for saving me because um, I pretty much like that. I knew I was like, I knew God was like intervening some way because my desire to binge drink every morning and all day and to be doing this, these reckless drugs just left me. And, um, because I called on the name of the Lord. And so I decided I was going to be a Christian and I was like, oh yeah, I'm a born again virgin. I'm going to be sell. I had some twisted idea about purity. Um, because a lot of people I grew up were hypocrites and they were, they didn't teach me really about purity. Um, like they said, oh, your first kiss should be when you get married. But then like, there was all this like, not treating marriage as a sacred thing. Um, growing up, I didn't see marriage modeled well. Um, and uh, just really, I wasn't really taught, um, I guess, biblical Christian purity. I really wasn't. Um, I was taught like extremes and um, not modeled um, Christian purity. So um, I had this twisted idea that, oh, I'm going to be cel celibate until I have a boyfriend who really loves me. And then I went on the, um, the like free train to um, sexual degeneracy again. And just went through all these boyfriends and um they these relationships were really bad um they had no respect for me i had no respect for them i just i guess just wanted the idea of a boyfriend i was um really lonely and i think that had to do with my spirituality i i was um spiritually bankrupt <laughs> and um so um that really led the way to the new age because um i knew that there was some type of like sexual um like uh purity involved in christianity but i couldn't really live up to it at where i was because i didn't have a foundation of repentance um of sin of really a belief in morality um because i i don't know i i just saw so much hypocrisy growing up um i i just didn't see a good enough um i don't know i think it was really no one was preaching the word of god to me no one was really telling me what the gospel said. They would say, oh, Jesus died on the cross so you can go to heaven. Okay, and then, you know, I'm secure. And they didn't really teach me about um, repentance from sin. It was really mo mainly obedience to authority and um, kind of like threats about, oh, if I like, you know, disobey, God's going to do this and that. But it, I wasn't really taught much about um, a loving God and um, forgiveness, mercy, repentance. So, um, and um, not a lot of like good, clear, concise arguments against what I was saying. 
um, which are really in the Bible about um, being my own God. Anyways, I um, had a boyfriend who was telling me about all these um, like super natu natural things happening in Buddhism about um, these crazy things that um, monks are doing. And I was like, well, no, I don't really believe in all that. I'm a Christian. And um, so, yeah, uh, back to like me believing in ghosts. Um, uh, I, I told, you know, my family I believe in ghosts and they would say, oh, ghosts don't exist. So, you know, there was like, um, not really like a foundation of, oh, these are spirits, these are demons, these are fallen angels. This is exactly what explains these like, um, other religions such as like paganism, like these were fallen angels, they weren't just myths. Um, because that's what lured me in. Um, I was learning about how every civilization has pretty much been, um, pagan, well, not every civilization, but many civilizations, um, throughout the ancient world, um, many of them were pagan. Um, many of them were, um, monotheist and Jewish, but, um, I was just focusing on, uh, the pagans and how it seemed like they had all these, like, Cool supernatural things going on and oh they believe in astrology astrology is pagan and I grew up on astrology and astrology must be good so um I learned more about astrology through through them and um I I I got into Buddhism and meditation and um, part of that was good because it helped my mind get more focused and sharp. Um, I actually was on ADD medication for um, 11 years and I felt like a zombie if I wasn't on it. Like I couldn't really do anything. I couldn't work. Um, but then one day I, uh, I woke up and I didn't need it anymore because I had been meditating for the past several months and that really prepared my mind to not need it anymore and I never needed it ever since. Um, so I mean I may be still a little ADD and kind of going through um, backstories but this is my testimony this is I explain things through uh, context and backstories. Um, so um, I, I, would be, I, I would be practicing um, vipassana meditation, Buddhism, um, all about clearing the mind and, um, getting into a trance-like state. Uh, one of those was called jhana, a type of, like, experiential, um, enlightenment, not even close to nirvana, but it was one of the stepping stones to there. Um, I, I read comic books about Buddhism, called, one called Buddha by Osamu Tezuka, and it was a whole series illustrating like the life of the Buddha and miracles surrounding him, um, like how Buddhism started. I got into, uh, later I got into Hinduism and I was worshiping idols. Um, Ganesha was the main one. I would um, have a mala beads. They were these type of prayer beads. Kind of like a rosary and i don't think there's anything wrong with the rosary by the way i know some people think those are pagan i don't think meditating on prayers is um bad or pagan um so but yeah i would use those beads and i would pray um i don't want to say it but it was a prayer to ganesha i'd pray it like 100 something times a day um, and then I would meditate for 20 minutes a day. I did yoga. Um, I was involved in ritual, um, not blood sacrifice, but like um, sacrificing food um, to the goddesses. I would leave um, food out and honey in the shape of a pentagram. I was reading these spell books, these pagan books, these goddess books, and they were telling me um, to do these things. Um, these were like ancient rituals. So that's what I did. Um, I wanted to invoke their power. 
I don't even know what I really wanted power to do besides have money, have, um, have, uh, love. Um, I was also like bisexual growing up and this is something I couldn't really reconcile with Christianity. Um, I'll go into detail about my, um, repentance from homosexuality, but I think that was a, a big reason why I couldn't become Christian. Um, because yeah, I, I came to people and I was like, oh, I am bisexual and they would have these like bad like reasons why I shouldn't be like, oh, you, bisexuality doesn't exist. Like <laughs> what? Uh, so yeah, and they brought me to like a Christian counselor and they said, um, bisexuality doesn't exist. Um, they were just like not being like kind to me um not saying that we should accept homosexual sexuality and not saying we shouldn't call people out on their sin for it but i think there's like crossing the line and so there was definitely um crossing the line and um so that was one thing that couldn't bring me to christianity and that's something i liked about the new age is um they're very accepting of that very about LGBTQ um, equality, not just in regard for the law, but socially. Okay, um, so yeah, I uh, I was reading these books about mindfulness, and there was um, a book called Mindful Love, and it really um, uh, <laughs> it's such a perversion of Christianity. They were quoting A Course in Miracles, which is um, the author, she encountered the spirit of Jesus Christ, and he was saying to her to abandon the old cross, the old rugged cross, and to pick up the new one, which is the new one of the new age, and he was telling her that um, we are God. We are um all god everything is god um and you know new age is such a confusing teaching because they incorporate buddhism but buddhism also says everything is nothing all is one these really weird vague teachings like everything is emptiness um i was reading these books about um mindfulness and meditation they'd say everything is perception like these things that are clearly not true these things that clearly make no sense um so yeah that was the nonsense i was dabbling in um with the new age i i learned about tantrism tantric buddhism which is uh sex magic um i was practicing that what i wanted to do was be a high priestess and I wanted to start my own coven. <clears throat> Actually, um, about a week before I became a Christian, I was messaging um, my friends, these girls, and I was saying, oh, we should go do an ecstatic dance out in the middle of nature, the forest or something, and just do um, naked dancing to summon <laughs> spirits and um yeah so that's the route my life would have gone down and um i probably would have been in some type of like um rajneesh type of um well they call them covens they call them um you know meditation groups pagan groups whatever they're cults they're really cults especially when they're surrounding a guru so that is the path I would have went down. I chose Christianity. I chose God when um, there was a few things that happened. My family, um, part of them, some of them were really just hammer hammering the word of God into me. And sometimes I just, I, I couldn't stand it. But then sometimes I was like, really listening to what my cousin in particular was saying, who's talking about 
the Illuminati and how all these celebrities, like, they go like that. It's like, well, what does that mean? And um, he was uh, talking about the Illuminati eye and all that symbolism. And that's something I was into. I was into the third eye. But then he showed me in the Bible where it says in Zechariah that the thief is blind in his right eye. Um, and that's where that comes from. And it's so weird. My, um, this is like some type of spiritual experience. And um, yeah, I really want to share it because it, it shocked me. I didn't know what to think about it at the time. But I started like uh, my right eye started burning really bad. It was just tears, um, watering a lot. It, it was burning a lot. So that really spooked me. And I was reading um, The Flower of Life and The Emerald Tablets. Then uh, I just felt so convicted. I was like, oh my goodness, like, this this sounds so evil um there was some spiritual presence that i just read into this book like reading this book i like the author behind it the spirit behind it did not seem right it seemed like very um i don't know how to describe it kind of cultish and then um um uh, I wish I could read it right now. It, it's like there's the same spirit behind both of those. You can read the first few pages of each book and they both sound very similar and um, it's just like the same kind of essence. Um, so I just started sensing that things weren't right. Um, and then I came across this video from Stephen Van Kars about his New Age to Jesus testimony and I watched it and I was like, oh my goodness, um, it, it's Jesus. Jesus is God. Jesus is the God I've been searching for. Jesus is the spirituality I've been searching for. Jesus is the truth I've been searching for. Um, and I cried and I repented and I called my family and I was like, I want to be a Christian. Um, I asked, can you be pansexual and be a Christian? And they said no. And I said, okay, you know, uh, I think God was, um, there for me while I was dead in my sin. Like I was really dead in my sin. Like, um, <clears throat> I was addicted to everything. I was just, I was such a sinner and I still am a sinner, but not like dead in my sin. God empowers me to um be good like through him like i'm not good on my own accord but he who lives me the creator of all things the maker of all things um god almighty um the holy spirit lives in me and he has redeemed me and brought me into a place of holiness he has um led me to repentance um his kindness um and his 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 words of his words of like disapproval of this word uh, of this world um like what's going on in hollywood i started to see before i became a christian i started to see like there's something off about these people, but they're worshiping the same thing as me. They're in the same religion that I am. So why does something seem so evil about them? It's not just all the money they're making. It's like, why are they all doing these things? Why are they all flaunting the same symbols? Why are they all preaching the same message? Um, it, it's very against Jesus, but it's what I believe, which was you know, before was new age. Um, so yeah, um, I want to thank, um, Stephen Bancars for, um, posting his testimony. Um, I know my testimony might've been a little jumbled. I was going to write it down, but, um, I have a baby, I'm married. Um, I'd like to put on kind of like 
freestyle my thoughts on topics. Um, maybe one day when uh, Caspian's a bit older, I'll be able to write things down, be more um, brief, curt, um, organized. But um, yeah, I just wanted to share my testimony. Uh, what led me to the new age, what my foundation was um, in in Christianity and lack thereof, um, what I practiced in the new age and um, what I, um, how I came to Christ and um, my repentance. So yeah, after I came to Jesus, I've been sanctified. I did fall a few times. Um, in in regards to purity but then i i was abstinent for three years then i um got married and yeah preserved my um purity for for marriage and um yeah god's really done a work in me and he uh, i i was just uh, I, people were probably very shocked when i became a christian i was definitely one of the chief sinners um chief foremost sinners wow um so yeah i just want to give hope to people who may be um like confused about the history of christianity um in new age there are so many myths about christianity like oh they're just borrowing from pagan religions or jesus is just some type of uh archetype he didn't really exist like these gnostic nonsense myths um that yeah you dig and you learn about history and like you don't even have to go to christian sources like jesus did exist he did die on a cross he did preach this message that he is god um and whoever believes in him will have eternal life there is um so much historicity in the gospels and um the canon of scripture um so yeah i i just wanted to um say share that and um one day i will share my testimony or i guess not my testimony but well sure yeah my testimony my story of like where i was when i was first a christian to where i am now um because i was in the nar before so That'll be um, an interesting um, Christian testimony. And thank you for listening. Um, I hope my um, testimony um, touches someone's life who may be into homosexuality um, slash bisexuality. Um, and I have such a, a, a testimony about other things I'll also um, touch on sometime. But yeah, someone who is in um, New Age sex addiction, astrology, um, atheism, agnosticism, all of those things, um, I have experienced, I have lived, and, um, just know that Jesus is Lord, Jesus is God Almighty, he will take away your sin, just trust in him, lay everything down to him, like, you don't have to do it in your own strength. Just ask God to, like, just pray constantly. Ask God to come into your heart, your life. Be your Lord. Um, fill you with his Holy Spirit. Um, and when you're, like, when you want to be a Christian, God willing, you will get baptized. And then, you know, the Bible says, um, the um, baptism saves you. So if you're like a true Christian, you're going to want to get baptized. Um, and then, um, yeah, continue to take um, communion, the Eucharist. Um, I'm not going to tell you what church to go to, but I would like to touch on my um, view of church and um, about like yeah, the understandings that I've come to as a kind of someone who's like not really part of any denomination um, as we have them today. So yeah, thank you for listening.